I would have just dreamed to have this life two years ago. Be working a few hours a day on the farm with my family. I would have never thought that was possible. I'm Justin Rhodes, owner of Abundant Permaculture. Shake the, shake the dirt off. So I get up at six o'clock in the morning, um, get out, uh, feed, feed and water the chickens, let them out, count them, make sure they're all there, everything's good. Usually then the kids wake up and they come out and we usually have a some sort of farm project for the day. Here, I'll hold these. You get, you get those right there. Whoa. Well, wait, make sure. They might be, uh, actually those might be Swiss chard. Okay, here. <laughs> this is, uh, people wonder why I wear an apron. We come in, we like hobbits, we eat second breakfast, a brunch every day. This is like a big production, like eggs and um, some green from the garden and homemade yogurt from the farm, from the cows. We eat every meal together. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Have an early dinner, probably around five, and see everything is scheduled around the weather. Like in the summer, we stay up a little bit later. In the winter, we go to bed a little bit earlier. You know, just kind of going with the season. Winter's time of rest, summer's time of work. It's amazing because you know where it came from, you know what was put on it, you know everything about it. The day we planted them, it was like a Sunday, I think, and I mean, it was just a really good time with my family out there. Justin was planting other things and I was planting potatoes and the kids were running around and helping me and just good memories too. What do you want to do with your life? What do you want to do when you grow up? A farmer or adventure in the woods. A farmer or adventure in the woods? What does that look like? Adventure in the woods with a camera, filming it, wildlife. You'll be good at that. What about you, big guy? What do you want to be? A wildcat. A wildcat. This is uh, tomatoes, squash, cucumber. There's kale, there's onions, there's Swiss chard, there's beets. We've got the garden around the chickens. Before this has happened, the, the, the fence area is easily moved and it was in this whole area where you can see everything that's planted. Well, we, we didn't plant all this at once because we don't need to eat all this at once. Well, the garden needs fertilization, tilling. Those are just a couple of the things the garden needs. Well, the chicken needs food, okay, and the chicken gives tilling with its uh, scratching and it manures, so it gives fertilizer. So then once you've made that connection, see, the garden gives food and the chicken gives um, fertilization. You've made that connection and you try to see if how you can work those together. Hey, will you go connect the fence, please? Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> this approach is, is what you call permaculture. And so um, well, how it's different, I, I say in main ways is that we're making the things, the things of the farm work together. Whereas normally people have their chickens and they're over here and they have their chicken operation and they have their garden and it's over here. But what we've done with permaculture is make that connection. At the end of the day is you get more abundance with less work. Before I really began to do this full time, I used to run a camp. The purpose and the idea of the camp was to immerse these young people who are interested in going out to another culture to do mission work or aid work. We were training young people how to live in another culture. And so we went extreme and went like total opposite culture. And so like we would uh, prepare the meals here. There's a gas stove back there. There's a stainless steel sink. Just give them an idea to rough it. Just get them really out of their comfort zone. And because if they can adjust to this for in a short amount of time, it helps them to understand what they might have to adjust to going to another culture. We were happy and content living on a small income, but at the end of the day, I really think probably somewhere in the back of my mind that this wasn't gonna be sustainable. And then I got sick with Lyme disease. He got so sick that we canceled camp that next year. And we were just, you know, at rock bottom and 
scared because we were like, where are we going to have money? And we had supporters at the time, so they were still supporting us financially. Not a lot, but enough to get us by. Um, and we were on food assistance then. It was really hard. Like when I would, like my mom would sometimes meet me at the grocery store to help me with the kids, and I would have to check out and like I would slide, I would like hide the card and then slide it and like stick it back in my wallet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why do you want to know? <laughs> One doctor told me like until the stress is relieved, he'll never get better, and that was a really scary point for me because like how do you relieve financial stress? without working and but you have to be better to work and so it was just like a really scary point for me because I was like what are we gonna do with the increasing bills and the lack of energy we knew something had to change and we had been introduced to permaculture and we found this guy Jeff Lawton he's just like the best in the field and we're like He's all the way over in Australia, but he's the best in the world. We're like, okay, if we're gonna have a career change, let's put everything else we've got into this. We don't have the money, and you know, I'm pregnant with Gideon. We had our Lyme diagnosis then, and it was kind of like, can we do this? Is this something that we can do? But it was kind of like we had to do it. That's when we took the plunge. We took everything we had left and went to Australia to study under the best in permaculture to have a complete career change. Not only was I taking the regular classes, I was thinking and journaling and uh, talking to people and asking all kinds of things. You know, on the way on the plane ride home, I, I wrote an entire business plan. This I'm gonna make this happen because it's got to. So when I got back from Australia, I wanted to turn what I'd learned in permaculture into some kind of business. And so I just began to bust it. I just began to study as much as I could, listening to the podcast, reading the books, researching online, taking in as much as I can and began to implement that. It gave me a drive. It gave me a purpose. It distracted me from the Lyme disease. I began to lift out of that depression. I had something to do. I had something very meaningful and exciting to do. It was all new to me. Growing food is something that I was already doing. I now had a better concept of it and a way to approach it with permaculture. And it was helping me heal and, and we needed it for our well-being. I wanted to create a business out of that. So I began to just teach what I already knew. So I created a film on how to raise your own chickens. He did it all. Like All of a sudden we were having filmers come to our house and they were gonna film this trailer for Kickstarter and then we were doing a Kickstarter and then it made the goal. <laughs> and we were like blown away. Like this is gonna work. Like this is gonna be our job. It was an overwhelming response and we knew this was our career change. This is what happened. This was our pivoting point in our life from old life, illness, and now a new purpose that people are responding to and that is really making a difference in the world and that we're happy to wake up in the morning and do. And it evolved and finally became a daily vlog. Okay, I'm Justin. Welcome to my farm. Look at this system I've got going on. See these chickens behind me? See this garden area? Yeah, they're working together. That's what permaculture does. More abundance with less work. Look what I'm talking about. You can have a wonderful garden. You can have one. That was surreal when we began to monetize them with YouTube. And that was for real when that became a legitimate source of income. And we finally confirmed that it was gonna happen, that we were gonna get our money from Google, and it was like, we had this real moment. We had to stop and just cry, and out of with tears of joy. Okay, are you guys ready to go to Grandma's? When I discovered permaculture, it changed my life drastically because I was at the point where I was slowing down. But what permaculture teaches you to do is just work with nature. And what happens when you work with nature is you have less input and more output. Finding our role, our destiny if you'll call it, is so fulfilling. It's just wonderful when you find your place, when you've served people in the way you were meant to serve. And that's where we're at. It's a very exciting place to be, especially since we're so fresh of being on that upside. Get your Jonah. Oh. Hold it, hold it backwards. She's very kind. Look, she's very small. Okay, you just pat her. 
anybody can do this. We didn't even have a Facebook going in, into this, okay? So we learned it all and worked really hard and followed other people's instructions and just did really well and we're really excited about that because we've created an income for ourselves around something that we're passionate about and something that is helping the world be a better place. We're gonna have a checkbook that has money in, it, in that account just for giving away. And like, I cannot wait till we get to that point where I have a gifting checkbook where I can just give people money when they need it or when if I, if I, if I see a need, I can just write a check. Yeah. And like, that's gonna feel so good because we've been on the end where we've gotten the gifts yes. and it's been so encouraging to us. Like, there's like no limit to what we can do. You know, like we have like this open door of success.